This is a unique plane with advanced avionics upgrade and features that you won't find in almost any other 172, including, including some of the newer models. As always, I want to thank you for watching our video and appreciate if you could take the time to like our video and subscribe to our page if you want to see additional videos from us. And then if you've got any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. We always take time to respond to everybody that has any questions or any comments that they make for us. Now this 172 is for sale, so I do have a link down in the description below if you wanted to go ahead and take a look at it. Um, one of the things that we can do for you is arrange an independent inspection here on the field. And then if you purchase the aircraft, we can have it completely sanitized and transported to you, help you avoid that commercial travel. With the federal interest rate cut down to 0% right now, interest rates on equity loans such as aircraft is at an all-time low, and that is going to save a ton of money over the long run. And the other benefit is that when you have your own personal plane, if you need to do essential travel, you can avoid commercial travel by flying yourself. This 172 is a local trade-in, and I've actually got a panel open. We'll take a look at that in a minute. But walking around the outside here, I'm going to show you some of the features around it. I'm going to start up front on this cowling. So a few things to look at here. You can see that overall, the paint is actually in really nice condition. Um, you can take a look. It's got stainless steel screws up front here, and it's got a super easy access. So all you have to do is clip here and here, and you can access the battery if you want to put a maintainer or a charger on it those colder months to keep your battery operational it's really nice to have that access there for everything oil and um, what have you for the engine and it just two clips spin it around and it's popped right at that um, like I said overall really decent condition on the paint there's a few spots here some of this is um, just bugs that we haven't got cleaned off just yet but some of it is a few spots on the paint that could be touched up um, few chips here and there. So if you see here, we've got the lights on, your landing lights. These are LED upgraded lights, very low power drain on the system, super bright, makes it really easy to see at night when you're landing, but also when you're in flight you can have it on because it's low, visi like low visibility, whatever. Anybody can see you much easier, other planes that are flying. And since it's such a low drain on the system, you don't have to worry about taxing your alternator or your battery. And then two, since they're LEDs, they last for basically almost ever, so you don't have to worry about switching out bulbs like you would in a conventional system. While we're over here, I'm going to go ahead and show you to the baggage compartment, show you just how much space you have for bringing stuff along with you when you need to haul. You've got 120 pound um, capacity back here, You've got this extra carpet to keep the original one um, nice and clean, and tons of space. You can fit a lot of stuff back here when you're traveling. And while we're here, you can take a look at these glasses and see just how nice of shape these glasses are in. They have been replaced. Um, I'd have to check and see if they were done in 2014 when the rest of the interior was done, but it was recently. You don't have any scratches or swirls or anything on these glasses. makes it really easy to see visibility-wise when you're, when you're flying. Again, just walking around the plane, you can see overall the paint is really nice shape. There's a few spots here and there that could use a little bit of touch-up, um, but really it's, I mean, it's got a little bit of dust on it because it's been in our hangar. And of course you can see the Skyhawk logo there. This is the Skyhawk package, not just the standard 172. doesn't have any hail, dents, damages, anything like that. The body has been well maintained. Paint's been kept clean so you don't have spots since it's been hangered. You don't have the sun fade or things like that on it. The plane is in current annual, and before we took it in on trade, we had a detailed pre-buy inspection done. 
There was nothing important found, a few little minor things, but everything else was really great on it. Um, no history of flight school. And I was talking about it being a Midwest plane. So I actually just popped open one panel at random. And I want to show you inside. And it's going to be a little bit hard to see, but there is not a speck of corrosion in here anywhere. And you can actually see all of the original markings and everything still on there. This 1964 Cessna 172F has advanced avionics. On the inside, I'm going to show you that now. It has a mini glass cockpit, which is close to $10,000 install. You can see it is the Garmin Dual G5s. Um, you've got your main one here, and then you've got your G5 HSI. And both of these G5s, each of them have their own magnetometer, which is the most expensive way of doing the install on it. You can see here you've got all of your main gauges going, and obviously most people have heard of the G5s now, but you can see it's set up here for the altitude and your turn coordinator. Um, everything is all set and ready to go on there. You still have your original airspeed indicator and your turn coordinator, as well as your direction, um, your vertical speed, and your altimeter here. So what's nice about this layout is that you've got your standard round gauges for those that are used to that, and then you've got your Garmin in here. So you can look at both and you can reference back and forth. It makes it really easy for somebody that's learning a glass panel. You've got the originals that you're used to to fall back on and review, but it's also a nice redundant system to be able to look at both and make sure. Another thing about the Garmin G5s is that they do have internal batteries, so if you had a complete power failure, for example, then these would continue to run, let you get safely on the ground. The other thing that we're looking at here is that we've got two digital radios. So the digital radios are very helpful because you can have the multiple frequencies tuned in and on standby switching back and forth makes it really easy for long distance travel and IFR travel and this is IFR certified it also has the ADSB out which is the um, narco transponder that's been connected with a GDL 82 um, the Garmin GDL 82 that's been slaved into the narco transponder here for the ADSB out compliance You've got all of your standard stuff, obviously, your throttle and your mixture, your carb heat, um, your wing flaps are set up here with 40 degrees um, down over there, and then you've got your RPM gauge and all your standard stuff here, your fuel tanks and oil pressure, and you can see over there, oil temp and everything like that, suction gauge, it's all your standard gauges down there. If you look at the overall panel, you can see that it's been completely redone. This has been um, replaced when they did the updates. And another thing, too, is the yoke. It's Even though it's a little bit older model plane, it's got the newest style yokes on here. These are really nice. They're super comfortable when you're flying. You've got your push to talk on both um, the left and the right control. We'll take a look at the interior of this 172 it's been completely redone in 2014 you can see that everything is coordinated from the door panels having both the leather and the cloth material on there and these wall panels with really nice big pockets for storage and then even the carpets were redone and completely sewn off no frayed edges or anything like that anywhere all the way up to the seats. So the seats were fully reupholstered. This got the two-tone again between the cloth material and the leather. And they've got some little nice little features on here. These little clips can hold the seat belts in place so that you're not digging around for your seat belts when you take it off. It doesn't fall all the way down to the ground. Um, this left-hand seat is fully adjustable. I don't know if you can see this here, but we've got a crank, so it will actually adjust the height up and down quite a bit, which is really nice. And then obviously your forward and backward lever right there. Uh, 
And then moving back here, it has a shoulder harness for the front seats, which is a nice safety feature to have. And then these back seats obviously were reupholstered as well. Um, and it's split in more of a bench style, a little bit more comfortable design for the cushions in the back. It's got a four-place intercom system, so all four people that are in the plane can hear, um, have their headsets on. And then it's got nice little pockets in the back. These are actually plastic on the back and plastic pockets, so you've got nice storage space back here behind the seats as well. If you take a look up top here, the headliner was redone. It's got a nice vinyl material to it. You've got your dome lights up here, as well as these directional lights that are turned right down to the panel, so it's really nice in the night flight. You have these two lights that just go and you can focus them anywhere that you need to on the panel. You can see these visors are super helpful when you're going to be flying into the sun. They keep the sun right out of your eyes, but you can see all the way through them. Up here in the corner, we have our temperature gauge which is helpful for calculating your true airspeed while in flight. Very beneficial thing to have there. And then one other thing on the panel is the um, vertical card compass up here, which makes it really easy to tell which direction you're flying as opposed to the old style that turns because this obviously um, turns the same way that you're used to um, down on your gauge panel as well. Finally on the panel here you can see how much everything has been redone, the attention paid to the detail of everything with all of the markings, very easy to see. You've got your updated knobs on here and then all of the um, circuit breakers with the labeling on all of the new stuff that was put in makes it really easy to know what each of them is for as well as what you, each of these little knobs and buttons are for between your beacon and your lights and everything like that so it makes it really easy to know which one is what for what you're doing. Going down the center here to final, finalize and round everything out, we've got our elevator trim, and then we've also got our fuel tank selector. It's got the left, the right, and the both option on here. You can see they're 18 gallon tanks per side, um, nice and clearly labeled, makes it really easy to use that. Next we're gonna show you the engine of this Cessna 172. This is the Continental O300D six-cylinder engine with 145 horsepower. When you're taking a look at it, you can see just how clean the engine is overall. Everything's in good condition. You've got this is good. There's no um, soft spots on it. When you look at the spark plugs and the cylinders and everything. Everything is clean. The wires are in good shape been well maintained motor. Um, that access panel comes up right here so you can see you've got your jump point, your battery box, um, obviously your oil fill as well as your oil dipstick are right there. Uh, it's got dual magnetos and then the starter is over on the other side. So a few specifications about this plane. Um, it's got about 3250 total time on the airframe and only 795 hours since major overhaul on this engine. Although you want to double check the POH and everything, um, some basic numbers here. The takeoff weight on this is 2,300 pounds and the plane is just over 1,400 pounds which gives you about 900 pounds of useful load. With a 36 gallon fuel capacity at about 216 pounds that gives you almost 700 pounds for your passengers and baggage, which is a really good weight. The range on this is about 670 miles when you're burning only about five and a half gallons per hour. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get ready to start it up here. I'm gonna prime it a couple times over there in the bottom left corner. And while he's doing that, um, we already did the take off trim and have the fuel selector to both. So once it's primed, I'm going to go ahead and put the mixture in. You can also prime it using the throttle like that. Have the master switches on.
up here. We had the mixture lead for taxi, so we pushed that in. And then at 1600 RPM. And then we're doing the mag check. Left. That's the left side. Right. And right side. Okay. Pulling out for the carb heat. I don't know if you can see this on the garment here, but down in that bottom left corner of the left garment screen, you can see that we've got a couple of different numbers there, 52, 57, and 70. So you can see that those are our stall speeds and our rotate takeoff speeds. Fergus Falls traffic, Skyhawk, 5 Alpha Hotel, ready for departure, runway 31, we'll be heading westbound, Fergus Falls. Flap indicator down here. We had a no flap takeoff. A little bit of a course correction for the left crosswind. Take a look over here in the corner on the left hand Garmin G5. You can see the left hand ribbon is our. So we're right about 74, 75. We're at 1900 feet. It's a little bit hard to see, but we are climbing at about 500 feet a minute. Which if you go over here, you can see that it's showing about 400, so that's pretty close. Kind of hard for me to see from the side that looks about right. On the airspeed indicator, we've got miles per hour and knots, the factory one. And you can see that it's just under 90 miles per hour and just under 80 knots. And then over on the very, very bottom left corner of that Garmin G5, you can see our current ground speed, since we are climbing, is running about 66 knots. Over there on the left, you've got your uh, standard turn coordinator and your ball there. And then on the G5, there's also the ball in the center, the little white dot to the bottom. Make sure that you're flying coordinated. Taking a look here on the Garmin again, you can see the exact nose up attitude, the little yellow mark there. You've also got your airspeed as well as your ground speed, and the ground speed is calculated, it's got a built-in um, with the GPS so that you can see. And then the right-hand ribbon is our altitude, so we're at about 3,000 feet. So with the clouds that are just going to be a little bit above us, we'll go ahead and we're going to level off there. Okay, so one of the things about the um, vertical speed indicator, usually these ones in the factory setup, are a little bit behind them, just a little bit of lag to them. So they're not always showing exactly what you're doing. It takes a little bit of time to catch up, catch up to whether you're going up or down. But on the Garmin, it's almost instant. So that's nice to have because you actually know there, especially when you're flying in IMC conditions. We're gonna get set up and when he's ready, he's gonna start a, a little bit of a steeper turn. So we can see how the gauges react, both the factory on the turn coordinator as well as the Garmin. I'm going to show you your bank angle if you see across the top there. You've got your degrees marking with your two arrows. One of the main things with the digital gauges and the digital avionics like this is that everything is a little bit more precise. So you've got much quicker feedback and response when you're taking these turns, making sure that you're in straight flight, you're making level flight, not 
pitching your nose up and down, climbing or descending when you're taking these right, deeper turns. So if we take a look at the airspeed indicator here, it's sitting at 108, going up a little bit from there. And you can see that our ground speed is actually 109, 108 knots. Pretty decent pace to be flipping along here in a 172. So you've got your carbon HSI here. You can see there are multiple settings that you can rotate through. You can set a course heading that you want to fly so that you have that entered in there. Then you can see the arrows behind us, which that's the heading we'd want to fly, 310, which is directly behind us. So it also indicates which direction, not just a line, but which direction you want to be going. Some of the other options include the basically a duplicate of what was on the left one. If you were to have a failure, the nice thing is, is that you know you can move over to the secondary. Your primary is not working. You've got obviously your standard VOR back in there again. Burgess Falls traffic, Skyhawk, 5 Alpha Hotel, two miles to the north. We'll be doing a midfield crossover to enter the left downwind for runway 31, Burgess Falls. Go ahead and get another set of flaps in here, so we're down to 20 degrees of flaps. I hope you enjoyed watching our video. I would appreciate if you could like it. And as always, if you want to see more of our videos, subscribe to our channel. If you've got any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below and we will definitely respond to you. And if you're interested in this aircraft, again, the description down below has a link to the listing for sale.